Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I want to talk about the brand new Lightroom Classic version 11. So today Adobe has released the newest version of Lightroom, version 11, and it, in my opinion, is one of the biggest releases of Lightroom in quite some time. So while it doesn't have pages and pages of new features, it does have one very big new feature, and that is the all new masking feature that you've probably already seen some coverage of. So masking is basically, they have changed what was previously the selective editing tools, such as the gradients and the brush tools, and they have combined it into an all new, redesigned from the ground up masking feature. So with masking, you now get a visual interface for all your masks. And this is kind of like, almost like having layers. Um, you can rename individual masks. You can toggle masks on and off. You can also add and subtract masks from one another and you can create intersecting masks. So with this new tool, you can actually create some pretty complex edits uh, just in Lightroom without having to go to uh, another software application. But that's not even the best part. They've also added some AI-based smart masks for selecting things like the subject and the sky. Now, there are some other new um, things in Lightroom 11 as well, and I will cover them briefly at the end, but the biggest feature is by far the new masking. Um, function. So rather than me waffle on because I know <laughs> YouTube viewers hate long intros, so let's crack on and uh, let me just give you a demonstration of the various masking features. Uh, let me dive right in. So I just have an image here. So let me start off by just talking about basically how it works. We're in the develop module here and you'll notice that where we previously had the gradient, radial gradient and brush tools, we now have this new masking tool. So if I click on this, I will get the option to add a new mask. So um, say, for example, we just want to do kind of the old fashioned gradient mask. So I click on here and you'll notice we now have this new masking palette pops up. And if I just create a gradient like so, we now have our linear gradient like we would previously have and we can do our adjustments like so. So at the top here, you see we have this new masking palette and you can see it's like a little floating palette and um, this kind of doesn't really go with the traditional Lightroom interface. So you, the first time I saw this, I was like, what the hell? Um, but you can actually dock this here. I think having this separate is handy if you're on a small display like a laptop. Um, but if you're on a larger display like I am here, uh, I'm just going to dock this because I much prefer this here. So we now have our gradial mask and we can rename this, so we call this Darken Sky. And you can, of course, call, call this whatever you want. So we can keep adding masks as before. So say, for example, we want to add a radial gradient. So if we want like a control vignette. And you can see it's actually darkening the center, so we can just right click here and go invert. So now we have two masks. And again, I can rename this and call this radial and there we have basically similar to the old features, but we now have this palette where we can see and toggle masks on and off. You're not kind of hunting for the little kind of mask pucks that we used to have on the older version. Um, if you want to show the overlay, you can do that. And then if you select with mask, you can see like so. Um, so as you can see, it's quite fast as well. There's no kind of speed issues. You can also add or subtract from a mask. So if I click on the mask and on toggle it here, we have, first of all, we have our linear gradient. So I can say, for example, add to this with a brush. And let me just say, if I brush in here, again, I'm not actually doing this to <laughs> make a nice image here. I'm just doing this to demonstrate the feature. Okay, so now we've added a brush to that. And so I can add another one if I wanted. I can add another brush. So say, for example, something over here and so on. So now we have two brushes. Um, if I want to subtract, I just go subtract. And again, say, we just choose brush again, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, so let me just hide this one and I'll go back to our radial gradient here. So say, for example, if I wanted to do uh, an intersection, um, say with a luminance mask, I can go intersect mask with luminance range. And in this case, I can select just 
the luminance range. So this is like the function that you had before, but you can now do this with anything. In fact, if I get rid of all the masks here, so I can just uh, right click on this and go delete all masks. So say for example, in the previous version, if you wanted to just do a luminance range, um, you would have to create some kind of mask first, whereas now you can actually just have a luminance range mask on its own. So if I just exposure down here, and we can see we're just selecting the luminance range, like so. Now, obviously there's not really much use for that, but anyway, you get the idea, I'm just kind of demonstrating it. So that's kind of the basics, the very basics of it, but it gets far more interesting when you use the AI selections. So let me just jump to another image here. If you've used Photoshop um, with some of the recent versions, you know they have AI-based selections for things like sky and subject. And this basically is a one-click uh, operation to select various things in the scene. So for example, we can select the subject in the scene. So again, I'm gonna pop over to my masks here and I'm gonna go select subject and this will calculate for a second. And if we show overlay, you can see it's now selected the subject here. So if, for example, I wanted to change the color of this, I could make it like maybe a blue and say I wanted to take this even further and say I wanted to defocus the background more. So what I can do is I can actually duplicate this mask and it keeps the smart selection, um, which I'll explain more in a minute. And I can just go invert mask. So I can just, I have to click on th this one, <laughs> invert. Okay, so now I just reset this and I can like turn down the sharpness and maybe clarity and the texture just to kind of soften the background. And if I wanted, I could do like blow it out or darken it down. And there we have it. That would normally you would have had to have painted that quite meticulously. It would have taken a long time and uh, we do it in one click. So the cool thing about the smart masks as well is you can actually copy and paste them between images and you can even save them as a preset. So copy my adjustments and you can see we now have this masking pop up here. So I'm gonna turn both of them on and you see you get a warning that says AI powered selections need to be recomputed on the target photos. Let me show you how that works. So I just hit copy, jump to the next image and I'm gonna paste and you see nothing actually happens. But if I pop over here to the masks, you'll see we have this little warning sign. So we just select the first one and click update and then select the second one and click update. And we now have basically copied and pasted our smart mask uh, selection and all the edits that go with it. And not only that, but you can actually do this as part of a preset as well. So I could, if I reset this, for example, down there, reset this and then go, here's one I saved earlier. So again, I just have to go in here and update the masks. So this allows you to do some kind of complex um, presets that were based on a, a subject within the scene. Um, the other one then is of course sky. So let's go to this photo and pop back to the develop module. And again, pop over to the masks. In this case, I want to select sky. So again, calculating sky. And now we can adjust the sky like so. And with AI masks as well, you can also add and subtract from them and intersect with them just as you would with a regular mask. So for example, say I just wanted to darken the top of the sky here. Um, I can select the sky and then go intersect mask with linear gradient and I draw out my linear gradient and it's only affecting the sky at the top of the image and not at the bottom. So this is something that before you might often have a case where say you had a skyline and something and you just wanted to kind of have a gradient at the top of the image, but you would have to kind of paint out the objects in the scene or just kind of live with it. Whereas now you can kind of combine the both and you can affect the sky without affecting your subject. In fact, I can create another mask here by selecting the subject. In this case, we've just selected the building so I can brighten up the building, increase the contrast maybe up the clarity a little. And as you can see, that is quite effective. So uh, if I wanted to say, create another vignette over this, um, but again, I don't want to affect the building, so I can create 
a new mask. In this case, I'm going to select the sky again. So it's calculating the sky. And this time, I'm going to interact with radial gradient. So select the set like so. And I'm going to turn on show overlay so you can see what's going on. So that's not what we want. We want to invert that. Let's turn that off. And now, if I hide the overlay, you can see we're adding a vignette that is only affecting the sky. So overall, I think it's a pretty major update. Um, it might seem a bit fiddly at first, but once you've kind of got used to it, it will change the way you work with Lightroom. Um, I, I think I can safely say that. So that's kind of the main masking feature. Um, there's not That's not a full tutorial or anything, and there's lots of more you can go into it. So you can, as I said, you can do some pretty complex stuff with it. Um, but let me just briefly talk about some of the other features. So they have changed a few uh, kind of under the hood things. So the first one is, let me just pop this open. If you have the option to automatically write changes into XMP turned on, uh, previously this would basically write to the XMP file every time you make any adjustment whatsoever. And, and this could on, on older systems in particular, create quite a performance bottleneck. So they've changed the way this works now. It only writes the changes when you change your image selection. So basically when you move to another image. Um, this should make a big difference uh, in some systems because uh, turning that off was one of the things that it was often recommended to people if they're having performance issues with Lightroom. So they finally changed the way that works. Um, if you're in the library module and you're making metadata changes, it still writes uh, each time. However, you now will get a status option. You'll get a progress update up here, especially if you're writing across lots of files and you'll be able to stop it if you need to. Speaking of metadata, they've also uh, made a few changes to the metadata panel. So let me just show you these quickly. So if we select a bunch of images, we now have the option to show either just a single photo, the, the single active photo, so in this case, this one, or the metadata for all the photos. When editing the metadata on a photo, you now have a new option, uh, which is this little button up here. And when you click this, it only shows the editable fields. Um, and the other thing they've done is you now have the option to change what is displayed here when you have default selected. So if I go down to the bottom here, you see we have this option called customize. And this allows you to turn on and off metadata fields that will be shown in the default section. So that's kind of the main features. I'm sure I'm probably missing <laughs> something. Um, I will have a blog post on this as well, where I'll try and cover as much as possible. And uh, I will link that in the description below. Um, the other kind of thing is they've changed the system requirements. So if you're on the Mac, uh, they've dropped support from Mojave. So that was 10.14. So you now need Catalina at a minimum, so 10.15. And on Windows, they've dropped support for Windows 10 version 1903. So the minimum Windows 10 version supported now is 1909 or later. So that is pretty much it. Um, I will try and do a, a proper tutorial on masking in the future and showing some more of the advanced options that you can do there. Um, these changes are also coming to um, the rest of the Lightroom ecosystem and Camera Raw. So if you use Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom Mobile, or if you primarily use Camera Raw, you should get all the masking features as well. Okay, I hope you have found this a uh, quick overview useful and if you do please don't forget to like share and subscribe and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time